we're going to be looking at diffraction gratings. Diffraction gratings are multiple slits that are used to accurately determine the wavelength of light. So the light that passes through the multiple slits interfere with each other to produce a pattern of bright and dark fringes. These images are showing you diffraction gratings where we're increasing the number of slits. So as we increase the number of slits, the bright fringes become sharper, more defined, which allows accurate measurements to determine the wavelength of light. The maxima or the bright fringes occur at angles theta relative to the central maximum where sine theta is equal to n lambda divided by distance d. d is the distance between adjacent slits. Lambda is the wavelength of light passing through the slit and n is known as the diffraction order. It is the nth maximum. So when n equals 0, that represents the central maximum. When n equals 1, it's the first maximum from the centre. So our theta will be our theta 1. And when n equals 2, it will be the second maximum from the centre. So the second order maximum makes an angle of theta 2 relative to the centre. So I'm now going to go through the proof of the diffraction gratings equation. It's not a proof you need to know for the exam, so it's for those who are interested. So here we have multiple slits of the diffraction grating separated by distance d. These are representing the waves from the slits that are meeting to form maximum n. And distance d, the distance between the screen and the slit, is much, much greater than the distance between the adjacent slits of the grating. And the light waves are diffracted by the slit through an angle theta. The path difference between waves from adjacent slits to reach maximum n is then n lambda. So we can use trigonometry for this right angle triangle. So relative to the angle, the path difference n lambda is opposite. And distance d is the hypotenuse. So we've got opposite and the hypotenuse. So we can use sine term. So sine of theta is the opposite, which is n lambda, divided by the hypotenuse, which is our distance d. So remember, this angle theta is for maximum or diffraction order n. So according to this equation, there will be a limit to the number of diffraction orders observed, and that's because sine theta cannot be greater than 1. So the angle theta cannot be greater than 90 degrees. Theta over 90 degrees would mean that the light waves have been reflected back off the slits, which is impossible. So if sine theta cannot be greater than 1, then n lambda divided by d cannot be greater than 1. So the maximum value of n has to be less than or equal to d divided by lambda, the wavelength. So for example, if d divided by lambda equal 4.3, as n has to be a whole number, then the maximum diffraction order observed is 4. That means we'll only observe 9 maxima, the central maximum when n equals 0, 
and then the first, second, third and fourth maxima from both sides of the central maximum. The gratings are expressed in terms of lines per millimetre, which represents the number of slits per millimetre. How we find D, that is the distance between adjacent slits, is, for example, if we say we have 10 lines per millimetre, that means 10 lines occupies a distance of 1 millimetre, so one line will occupy a distance of 1 divided by 10 millimetres. And this then represents the distance between adjacent slits. Adjacent lines will then be 1 divided by 10 millimetres, 0 0.10 millimetres. So you can see we've found D by 1 divided by the lines per millimetre, giving D in the units of millimetres. If you were given lines per metre and you did 1 divided by lines per metre, then D would be in the units of metre. When white light is instant on a diffraction grating, then the diffraction orders will be split into the different colours of the spectrum. And that's because as D is very small, the diffraction angle theta will be very big and it has become so big that it can actually separate into the different wavelengths of light. And you can see here that the diffraction angle for red light is greater than the diffraction angle for violet light. And sine theta is directly proportional to the wavelength of light. So the colour of light which has a larger diffraction angle has a larger wavelength. So the wavelength of red light is greater than the wavelength of violet light. It's important to note that the central maximum is white, and that's because all the colours of light reaching this point will have an overall path difference of zero, so all the colours will meet in phase and interfere constructively to add together to produce white light. So diffraction gratings is better to determine the wavelength of light then from the Young's double slit experiment, which gave us an approximate value of the wavelength because the fringes were not sharply defined. However, diffraction gratings gave you sharply defined spectral lines so you could make accurate measurements of the dif different diffraction angles for the different colours of light and hence accurately determine the different wavelengths for the different colours of light. So you're probably wondering, well that's all well and good, but what else use does diffraction gratings have? Well, the light from stars and galaxies can be analysed using a diffraction grating. So these are spectra from different types of stars. And stars are classified according to their spectrum. So the Sun is a G type star. So the spectrum of its light would look like this. Also, because you could determine accurate measurements of the different wavelengths of light using a diffraction gratings. From this, astronomers were able to see that the light from distant galaxies were redshifted relative to the light of similar galaxies nearby. And the redshift of this light was an indicator that the galaxies are moving away from each other and so provides strong evidence that the universe is expanding.